Lining becomes the easiest part of tattooing once you understand it properly, so in this video I'm going to teach you what you need to know so you can line tattoos like a pro. The first thing you need to understand is that a tattoo line is basically a bunch of dots. When we're tattooing we need to match the speed of our hand with the speed at which our machine is running in order to give it enough time to lay these tiny dots so close to each other that any spacing is completely gone and we're left with a compact line. If your hand is moving faster than your machine's speed, you'll end up with an unsaturated line, whereas if you move your hand too slow while the machine is running at a higher speed, you'll end up damaging the skin. The tattoo machine speed is determined by the voltage, so the higher the voltage, the faster your machine will run and the faster you will need to move your hand as well. I want you to know that there is no secret or ideal voltage that artists use, so my advice is to start around 7 volts and to experiment with different speeds as the best machine speed is the one you're comfortable working with. I personally run my machine between 7 and 10 volts depending on the design I'm doing, the area I'm tattooing and the client skin type, so don't be afraid to experiment with different speeds. Needle hang is how much of your needle is sticking out while you're tattooing. Once again, there is no ideal needle hang, so use whatever you're comfortable with. I prefer to have mine sticking out quite a bit, because it makes it easier to see where the needle is hitting, and I get more control over it. One piece of advice I can give you is to make sure your needle is sticking out far enough to not touch the skin with the plastic tube while you're hitting the correct depth, as it can create more discomfort for your client. The human skin has three different layers, which are the epidermis, which is usually paper thin, the dermis and the hypodermis. Our goal as tattooists is to hit the second layer of the skin, which is the dermis, and in order to learn how to do that, I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pen and to write down your name three times. Notice how your hand produces the same result every time and how your brain is preventing you from writing with a limp hand, barely touching the paper or from applying way too much pressure and ripping through the paper. Now I want you to understand that lining is pretty much just an extension of the same skill. So if you're currently practicing on fake skin, just try to do what comes natural without worrying too much about the result. Your own fears and worries will sabotage you if you let them, so try to relax. And even if you make mistakes, mistakes are not only normal, but necessary so we can learn from them and improve ourselves. The first layer, or the epidermis, is usually between 0.5 and 1.5 mm thick, which means you don't really need to apply a lot of pressure in order to hit the dermis, so let's take a look at three different tattoo lines and see what's happening with each one. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please take a second and hadouk and that like button, as it helps me a great deal. As you can see, the first line only hit the epidermis, which means I've barely scratched the skin, so this line will not hold after it heals, and most, if not all of the ink, will get pushed out. The second line hit the dermis, it's a nice consistent line, and this is the depth you should be aiming for. To give you a rough measurement, the line is about 1mm deep, so once again guys, don't apply too much pressure because we're trying to reach the dermis, not pierce through it. The third and final line is an absolute nightmare. This one ripped through the dermis and possibly went all the way down into the hypodermis, which means that if this was done on a real person, it would be a guaranteed blowout and an almost guaranteed scar, which will heal slightly raised above the skin level. It's crucial that you keep a steady hand while lining tattoos to make sure that the depth you're hitting is constant. If your needle is going in and out of the skin, you're gonna end up with a wonky line with inconsistent saturation, so parts of it will be thinner while others will look thicker. In order to avoid this, make sure your hand and wrist are always supported because this will give you the stability you need to make solid, crisp lines. A good rule is to try and keep your wrist fixed and only move your fingers for the shorter lines and to move your entire wrist for longer curved lines. If you want to build up longer lines out of short ones, you need to avoid going in and out of the skin at a 90 degree angle because this will show where the lines connect together. Instead, you want to taper in and out of your lines 
Then you want to start the second line a bit further up and not exactly where the first one ends. Doing this will allow you to connect lines seamlessly, so you don't need to worry about the length of the lines you need to do anymore. So what is the ideal needle size? Well, once again, there is no ideal needle size. For liners, the size of the needle determines the thickness of the line you're going to make, so in order to find the perfect size needle, you only need to look at the design you're tattooing. For comparison, let's take a look at the differences between a 3 round liner and an 8 round liner. As you can see, the lines made with the 3 are thinner, while the 8s are a bit thicker. And that's all there is to it guys, you don't need to overthink it, just try experimenting with different size needles and find what works best for you. That's it for today, thank you for watching and I hope this lesson helps you become a better tattoo artist. I love you all, see you in the next one.